we do not have to fear. Because when God is near, we don't have to live a life tormented with fear. To Zechariah, the message was, fear not, your prayers have been heard. To Mary, the message was, fear not, Mary, don't be afraid, because you have found divine favor with God. To the shepherds, the message was, fear not, exceeding great joy is coming in your future. And to the message to Joseph was, fear not, what is happening in your life is being birthed by the Holy Spirit Himself. Fear not because your prayers have been heard. Fear not because you have obtained the divine favor of God upon your life. Fear not because exceeding joy is coming in your future. And fear not because what God is doing is supernaturally birthing something in and through you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Great joy is coming. Don't rejoice about just what you've got. Rejoice about what you got rid of. And I'm here today to tell you you don't have to be afraid because your past is pardoned. Fear not because your present is powerful. But don't stop there. Fear not because your future is promised. Have you forgotten that we're headed to a city where the Lamb is the light and there is no sorrow, there is no tears, there is no sickness, death, or dying. Fear not death. Fear not devils. Fear not disease. Fear not calamity. Why? Because He is Emmanuel. Emmanuel means three things. He's God in us. He's God with us. But many of you have forgotten the third thing. He's God who is for us. God is not just with you and in you, but somebody needs to hear this today. God is for you. He knows what you've done. He knows who you are. And He still wants you to know, I'm not against you. I'm with you. I'm in you. And I am for you. Stop thinking I'm trying to get you back. I'm for you. I'm for you. And so now you're in the wilderness. The wilderness of what if. I now find that what if is a weapon that the devil uses to keep me from doing things that I know good and well in my spirit God has called me to do. You know, it's amazing to me how people can so clearly hear the devil but can't hear God's voice. I mean, isn't that true? I mean, don't you? It just seems like no one ever struggles to hear the voice of the enemy in their life. But you, constantly I meet people who struggle to hear the voice of God in their life. I mean, I mean, it really is astounding. It's amazing to me that a God who, who has been so faithful can be so doubted, and yet an enemy who is completely unfaithful can be so trusted. Now, here's what we have to remember about this. It's very important. is that the Bible is very clear that Satan is a liar. And there's nothing that, he, he can't even tell the truth. He, he doesn't know how to speak it. It's a language that's foreign to him. And then equally, God can never lie, and he is truth. And any time that God creates something, Satan creates a counterfeit to it. Any time that God creates something, Satan's going to say, well, I'm going to create a counterfeit to that. And so when God created faith, Satan created fear. Faith attracts God. Fear attracts the enemy in your life. Faith gives God access to work in your circumstances. Fear gives the enemy access to work in your circumstances. See, the enemy's central objective is to get you to doubt God's promises. Every fear that's ever brought into your life is an attempt to nullify a promise that God made you in His Word. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Fear wants you to forget that God's powerful. To the fact that, let me, let's just have a little exercise. Think of your worst fear. Because your worst fear is not more powerful than God's ability to bring His best into your life. If the God who hung the universe, the stars, the moon, the sun, if the God who has no equal, 
if the God who, who Scripture tells us uses the earth as a footstool, if He loves you, what in the world are you worried about? What are you fearful of? I, I mean, if, if that's the God who wants to be in relationship with you and give you attention, if that's the love that He is sharing, what in the world are you scared of? And, and, and here's, I, He's already taken care of the worst problem in your life, which was your eternal salvation. You, there's nothing you could do, nothing you could work, nothing you could earn, no person you could get to that would fix that problem. He's already fixed it. So if he can fix the biggest problem in your life, why can't we trust that his love will bring about this, every problem we've got on this side of eternity? He's going to protect you. He's going to provide for you. He's already done it. You're loved. But Paul says, be careful because fear wants you to forget that God's powerful. Forget that you're loved. You see, when fear comes in your life, it, it may overwhelm you for a moment, but there is nothing stopping you from taking a breath and beginning to believe the promises of God instead of what fear says. See, if you focus on the enemy, the problems will always seem huge. The result is fear. When you focus on God, your faith grows as you realize that God is bigger than your problems. Romans 8.31 says, If God is for us, who can be against us? God is on your side. Come on, you're going to come out of this and we're going to make it. Focus on God, not the enemies. It is a choice. That's why we worship. It's not just a tradition. Worship is connecting with God and focusing on Him and forgetting about fears. But I have, in my years, I have just noticed that people are scared about possibilities they can't see in the dark. Things that might happen, they get scared of. Winston Churchill was asked how he made it through World War II with all of its fears. He said, I act like I'm unafraid. I choose not to fear. I will not dread this. I will walk as though I am not. I'm gonna trust God. When everything seems like it's about to fall, what do you have to hold on to? And in our world today, so many times, we don't know what's to come. But so many times, don't you and I face what might come tomorrow with fear? Some of you fear the future. You aren't sure what God's ultimate plan for your life is. You fear taking a step of obedience with God. What, what if this doesn't work? Some of you fear the unknown. No matter how big or strong you are, there is something you fear. And whether we want to admit it or not, we all face fear. But for some of you, it's bigger. You are consumed with fear. God, I, I don't know what's next. I don't know what to expect or what to do. I'm afraid. There's no clear path to the future. So many times you stop growing because of fear change frightens you so rather than move forward and change you stand still keep moving forward obey god's voice in spite of your fear when you move forward in faith instead of standing still in fear god provides what could you do what would you do for god if you realize that you would overcome all opposition with his help, he is your protector. And I love what Isaiah, Isaiah 43 says, but now this is what the Lord says, fear not for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior.